I've been reflecting a lot on recent events that have taken place in Buffalo, New York. Uh, my first response was horror. My second response was, please don't let this be about race. Please don't let this be about race because I heard that it was a shooting before I understood the real targeted audience. And then I just developed numbness and a sick feeling in my stomach because I realized for many of us, we're asking, is this the new wave of the future? Is this open season on black people? And are we really here today? You know, many of us are having discussions about diversity and inclusion and equity. This incident in Buffalo is not about diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's about hatred. It's about fear. It's about deep-seated anger. And it's about an 18-year-old person thinking that something was taken from him, including his country and his rights, and he wanted to send a message. He even live streamed it. What's interesting to me is that with all the momentum after George Floyd's death and Breonna Taylor's death and Ahmaud Arbery, how things just wane and we go back into riding up into the sunset thinking everything's really okay now. And then we ramp things all up, tell us what to do, tell us what to think, tell us what to feel. The truth of the matter is, if we are not willing to keep our foot on the accelerator concerning this whole issue of race, white supremacy, fear, nationalism, if we don't stay consistent in addressing the issues, this is the new wave of our future and this is our new reality. I need you to pause. I need you to think about this. I think you to, I need you to talk about this and to ask, what does this new reality mean to you? My colleague, Harry Hawkins said today in a staff meeting, this man wrote a 180 page manifesto on his hatred. We think because we tweet a repost to put a sign in our yards, we're allies and advocates. Yet this man has written a 180 page document spewing his hate and leaving a legacy behind. Why? Because he's talking to his friends. He's talking to his audience. When I talk to many of my friends, the response is, but my circle knows, my friends know, they're, they're down, they're woke, they get it. This guy in Buffalo didn't just assume his friends got it. And he wanted to indoctrinate people who were not yet his friends, those who would worship him and esteem him. He left something in writing stating, this is what I feel and why I feel, and this is why I'm doing this, and this is what's at risk, and this is why I must stand up. I must step up to the plate. It's my time at bat because this country is being stolen and someone must do something. When hatred becomes more resolute in pushing its agenda than love, something's wrong. And if you don't know what to do, would be allies. Start with asking yourself the question, why does he have a 180 page manifesto and you've not talked to your children about race and racism, your classroom, your fringe, your coworkers, your associations. This didn't start with a shooting spree. It started with an idea, a perception, a bias, a fear, and it went unchecked. This was someone's altar boy, perhaps, someone's paper boy, but somehow this built. You don't just wake up one day and you're full of that hate. And this isn't just mental health issues. We can't call every raging racist someone. We can't just call them, you know, a victim of mental health issues. I hesitated at first to put this message out because I don't want to just show up when things are bad. And I don't. I talk about the good things that are happening, but I need you to know that my heart is grieved, not just because of Buffalo, but because Buffalo is Madison and it is Des Moines and it is Milwaukee and it is Philly. That's a microcosm of what I believe our country is becoming as long as well-intentioned white people. Don't talk about how this happens, why this happens, and why are our young white men so angry, so afraid, and so prone to be radicalized? This is the one point I don't agree with the president on. I can't help with that. 
I can't talk to you about the anger in young white boys any more than you can talk to me about the anger in young black boys. I'm talking to young black men. Are you talking to young white men? If you're not, buckle up. This is our new reality. I'm not looking to Buffalo to fix this or the president. I'm looking to you and I to fix this. I'm doing my part. My team's doing its part. What are you doing? Be a part of the change. Join the struggle because the struggle is real.